One of the things that we know from a significant amount of effective practice and research is that unless we have strong relationships among and between teachers and principals, teacher to teacher, and even between school and its community, it's very difficult to advance student learning. So strong relationships based on trust are what allows us to open the doors to have a deprivatization of practice, to build a culture of support within schools, to build what we in our organization called collective responsibility, where every educator within the organization sees his or her responsibility as supporting both student learning and educator learning. The second big idea is that we want to make sure that every teacher in a school has an opportunity to share his or her best teaching practices for the benefit of every student in that school. We are at an age and stage of an education system where it is no longer all right to have one teacher know what another teacher doesn't. It's critical that we build a collaborative environment. Roland Barth, a wonderful leader, writer, education um, leader in the States who was first and foremost a school principal, made a statement in 1992, I believe it was, and this was essentially what he said. I wonder how schools would change if we each shared what we know with one another. And for me, that's a pretty powerful statement. There was a time when I was teaching in a school where it was common practice to withhold my best ideas from my peers because there was a tremendous competition among teachers to know who was the favorite teacher. Who did kids want to be in class with? And so we withheld our good ideas from each other. And I think today we are trying to break down some of those barriers to build a more collaborative environment so that every student benefits from the wisdom of every single teacher in a school. So facilitating and modeling our best instructional practices for one another for the benefit of student learning is an important part of the process of this collaboration and collaborative environment. And the third is promoting and contributing to systemic change. It won't work if we have a single school that's successful. We need every school to be successful. It won't work if we have a single teacher within a school being successful. We need every teacher in the school to be successful. And it won't work long into the future if we have just a few students who are successful. We need every student to be successful. So we want to begin to think about this process systemically. How do we build and grow this process of learning to ensure every student reaches his or her potential? So these three big ideas, overarching ideas, have emerged from conversations with teachers here in Alberta.